Gina, uh, I'm, gu- I'm absolutely gutted. I'm um, after speaking with da- Dame Nolene yesterday, and uh, just the the progress we'd made throughout this tournament. I had big, big hopes, and I suppose all of you did too. Yeah, we definitely did. I think as well after such a good start, we were up by, I think it was four or five points after that first quarter. You know, we put ourselves in a really good position, and. Um, unfortunately it was sort of one to two quarters that sort of really let us down you know we're still in it at half time um, but that third quarter just yeah really and really took it away and I guess you know once the Aussies get up a couple goals it's really hard to um, to take them back off them so yeah I think we've made lots of progress in this tournament though and I think um, we were ready we probably just let ourselves down a little bit on some unforced errors yeah, they've been, I was going to say plaguing, that's not the, quite the right word, but we've seen that through all of these games, and Nolan talked about that yesterday as well. Just, I don't know whether it's rush of blood to the head, you'll be able to explain it or what it is, but it's just, I mean, those are the margins, aren't they? They're so fine, but if we make unforced errors, well, then this is, we get punished. Yeah, exactly, and we, we've spoken a lot about it, um, which is probably quite annoying for Knowles. Um, You know, it, it's spoken about, we recognise it, we acknowledge it, but I sort of it's the actions that are missing I guess so um, especially against a team like Australia like it's just it's so hard to get any ball off them um, so when we do we need to score it and we're sort of losing it before um, we can do anything with it so yeah an individual um, responsibility on a few things but also um, doing what we say we're going to do I think um, but for 60 minutes you know you see some really good patches I think from this group of 14 but we sort of couldn't string it together for a full game which is I guess still the goal. What what do you put that down to? Just watching it, you know, from a distance, watching it on TV, it, it seems, you know, the, well, this is the perception, it seems at times that they have a lot more time and space, that they press us really tight. And when we get the ball, we just don't have as much time or physical room. Is that actually what is going on? Yeah, definitely. I mean, obviously, I guess, like, historically, we play a completely different style um, to how the Australians play um, and their man on defence is um, pretty tough to take, I guess. So, yeah, I, I, just, I don't know what the answer is. I guess we're going to have to look at, um, you know, a lot of our game plans and our strategies. But um, there's times that we are um, finding good space and, um, you know, clearing our defender one-on-one and things like that. And then it just it seems to change quite a lot from quarter to quarter. We definitely found that tonight that, uh, the first quarter was quite open. It felt quite nice. And then straight after, um, they sort of closed us and pushed us all together. And so they can change quite quickly. And I think especially when they're down, they get super hungry. And again, these are all the things that we've spoken about before as well. We know it's going to happen. We're ready for it. We're trying to you know, embrace the challenge. And um, it's just not quite coming off for us in those crucial times. Gina Crampton is with the Silver Ferns lost 56-49 to Oz in the final of the quad series. And when you break it down quarter by quarter, 18-15, we're up in the first, 15-12, uh, uh, they even it up by half time. But it's just, you know, our goals, 18 in the first quarter, 12, then 9, then 10. So that's the pattern, isn't it? That once after that first quarter, mm-hmm. they absolutely were shutting us down. Yeah, definitely. Was, I mean, a positive to take from it is that we've, uh, usually we start quite terribly against Australia, um, you know, going back a couple of years. So all this week, I think, as well, we've actually started really well the, uh, when we played them in the pool play as well. We we were up first quarter. So that's definitely a positive. That's something that's changed in our group, which is good. But, yeah, we, look, we're trying to get over sort of that 15, 16 goal mark a quarter because when you get over 60 points, usually you're in the you're on the good side of the um, board, I guess. But mm. Um, it, we just really fell away and um, yeah, it's not going to get us anywhere when we're scoring nine or ten goals in a quarter, I don't think. Yeah, I know that, I, I mean, if memory serves me correctly, I know we lost the last few Constellation Cup and now these two, so that's four in a row against Australia. There is no mental block or anything as far as you're mm. concerned, as far as the team is concerned against this team? No, definitely not. I don't think so at all. Um, you know, obviously the one of the toughest teams going around but I think especially after you know performances like that this week we lost by small margins um we know that we can foot it with them but I guess it's just how we consolidate on a lead we had a lead in both games and we sort of let it slip so I think that's probably a bigger issue sort of in-house rather than looking at the other team
And how much of it is shadow boxing? And you know what I mean. We've got the world championships coming up. And so, you know, they're playing combinations. We're playing combinations. You never want to lose a test match, obviously. You never want to lose, you know, a series. When you're in a final, you want to win it. And I know that that's how you, because you are winners. And I know that that's how you think. Is, <laughs> is, 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 is there any kind of holding back of anything at all before the world championships? I don't think we held anything back um, this week. Obviously, those first couple games, we sort of had set lines and set combinations, so you knew exactly when you were going to play and who was coming on and things like that. And that was spoken about, that um, court time for everyone was a, a massive goal of the squad series for Knowles, and I think she definitely achieved that. But we also spoke about the fact that, um, you know, this was a grand final. We haven't been in the final of the quad series for as long as I can remember now. It's going back like five or six years. Wow. So, um, you know, we wanted to have that practice on what a grand final felt like. We also wanted to go back to back after winning against England yesterday. So there's all these things that we're practicing um, in time for July for the World Cup. So there's a lot that's going on. But I guess in terms of the game plan, Nothing was held back right now, but, um, you know, things can change in a couple months' time. <laughs> What's Dame Noeline said to you just in terms of all of your places in the team? I know that she's not the kind of person or coach that guarantees anyone anything. We saw that with Amelia Rand when she didn't make the Commonwealth Games side. So are you still of the headspace and the, and the mindset that you are fighting for your place still? Yeah, absolutely. I think everybody's well in the fight for positions. I think that's what's been really good about this group of 14 is that you know, it's been hard to choose a 12 to take um, the game each time, let alone the starting seven to take the court. So everyone's fighting, everyone's trying to show what they have um, and whether you can back it up. I think that was quite an important one this week, showing that you can um, play back-to-back -back games, you know, at three, sorry, four games in five days, which is going to be similar to the tournament style for World Cup. So, um, yeah, it's funny with Peta, obviously, she is a completely different wing attack to what I am. And I um, I guess, yeah, Knowles was just trying to see like what we could do um, on the court and we do our job. Uh, a couple more questions, we'll let you go. And I thank you so much for your time. So for between now and the World mm -hmm. Championships, what what do we have? We don't have any other international matches, do we? So, so, so what's the programme from here? Yeah, I, I, I guess um, the squad and, and the people that have been away this um, tour will definitely sort of stay in touch. I think we have a few sort of touch point days um, as a Silver Fern squad, but pretty much it's back to our ANZ teams. Um, and obviously it's a really important time. We want to be able to be working on um, individual work-ons throughout the throughout the season and making sure that we're putting out um, consistent performances, I think, and, and putting our hand up to be chosen in the team. And yeah, we're not sure if there's going to be any international games before World Cup. We'll obviously have camps and things, but it's all about just getting getting yourself right and ready and putting your hand up to be picked in that 12. And finally, and this might, you know, just sound like a strange question or not, but I'm just also intrigued and interested about this because I know that, you know, uh, you know, various sports teams have, you know, various budgets and, you know, some fly business class overseas and live in hotels and the All Blacks are at the mm -hmm. top of that tree. How does it work? For you guys, do you have that luxury as well? Do you get premium economy at least all the way to South Africa or are you back with the rest of us at 64B? <laughs> we, we you couldn't get further back than where we sit. Um, literally, we're in the very back row. So, um, yeah, it's an interesting one. Obviously, we don't want to be out there sort of like complaining that we're not um, in premium economy or anything. But I do feel for, we've got some big girls yes, in our team. We've got yes. some really tall girls. And it was quite awful on the way over, to be honest. We were all sort of in the middle of the middle. And, you know, they they can't even fit their knees. No, you can't. Look, I've just flown like to the, that. I just came back from the States with my boys. And, and I was saying to them, um, this is before Christmas, and I was saying, look, you know, maybe I'm paranoid. But I said, I actually think they've shrunk the rows. My knees now jam yeah. into the seat in front of me. I think it gets smaller the further you go yeah. back as well, so yeah. that's not ideal. No, that's not. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, it's pretty. Yeah, it's pretty tough. I think we're probably one of the only national sides that um, doesn't get that luxury. So, if you want to sponsor us, well, this is ahead. what I'm saying. I'm putting. I'm putting the, the call out right now. You know, and I know that. You know, there's a lot of attention on the women's rugby as well. But my, my kind of thing is, look, let's oh, let's spread it across every single women's sport. There's, you know, we got our, you know, high, you know, absolutely 
world-class athletes across all kinds of sports. Let's make it equal everywhere. I mean, you don't have to pick and choose what whatever sport it is. I mean, we, you know, as sports fans, mm. we dine out, we indulge, we love it when when the Silver Ferns win world champions, championships like we do everyone else. Obviously, that is, it just comes down to a cash thing, but yeah, I'm just really interested in it. So thanks for telling us that. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All the very best. Um, bugger about the result, and um, we'll hopefully be in touch before the world champs. But I thank you so much for your time. Cool. Sounds good. Thank you very much.